Let's talk about esters in A-level chemistry, but more specifically, I want to focus on ester hydrolysis because this is where I see the most mistakes being made. And the key here is, well, number one, base understanding, that's what we're going to start with, and then attention to detail so you make sure that you get your hydrolysis products correct. So starting with the basics, this is our ester, R-C-O-O-R, -O -O -R, okay? And our ester bond is essentially here. Okay, where this left part with the C double bond O, that is the part that is your O8, and that's the part that came from either your carboxylic acid, your acyl chloride, or your acid anhydride. And then on the right hand side, just this OR bit, actually, maybe I'll change colors here we go okay so just this or bit that's the bit that gets the aisle and that's the part that came from the alcohol okay so when we're hydrolyzing esters really we only think about it in the context of if it came from an acid okay and we can hydrolyze or break that um, ester bond either under acidic conditions or basic conditions or alkaline conditions. So let's look at both. If we've got acidic conditions, that means that we're going to need an acid, so some H plus ions. And of course, I mean, it's already included in this aqueous, but we also need, of course, water, even though, I mean, I've kind of written water twice, but hey, why not? We need lots of water. And so when we break this bond, if we think of water as actually... If we think of water as HOH, then all we are really doing is giving the OH part back to the carboxylic acid and giving the H back to the alcohol, so back to the O. So as our products, what do we end up with? We end up with... our carboxylic acid like this and our alcohol like that, okay? We've given the OH back to the carboxylic acid and then we've given the H back to the alcohol and it really is as simple as that. Now, if we were to do, th to do this under basic conditions, so typically you will see um, sodium hydroxide being used, so aqueous sodium hydroxide. Again, we can think, well, we don't even need to change what it looks like. In the same way that we thought of water as being HOH, sodium hydroxide is literally just NaOH, okay? So, in exactly the same way, because we're under basic conditions, we're not going to have an extra um, H plus to have our acid protonated. So what we're going to do is, instead, we are going to give an O na to the acid to the O8 part. So when it comes to our final products, instead of having a carboxylic acid, we are going to end up with a carboxylate salt. Because again, we're not going to have this acidic proton. Instead, we're going to have an O na. We can also write this as O minus Na plus, okay, because this is essentially a salt, sodium carboxylate, depending on what this R group is. And then the alcohol, that doesn't change, it's still just going to be ROH, just as before, again, where the O na came from the sodium hydroxide, and then the H well, also came from the sodium hydroxide. It really is as simple as that. But as we well know, and if you've done lots of practice, ester hydrolysis questions, they tend to just throw weird and wonderful molecules at you because they're like, well, this is too straightforward. So let's give them something that looks really scary so that they freak out and then they don't get the answer. When, if you just follow the same principle, you will be able to get it. So I'm going to draw something that looks a little bit scary, but stick with me. I'm gonna rub this out now. Oh. 
oh, should I keep this part? Maybe I'll keep that part. I think that'll be quite nice as a reference. So let's have, oh. Okay, are you scared yet? I hope not. So this is a cyclic ester. Sometimes they're also called lactones, okay? But it's a cyclic ester. And let's say that we wanted to hydrolyze this in um, alkaline conditions. So we add aqueous sodium hydroxide and they ask you for the, um, the product or products. Well, well, let's see. So first thing that we are going to identify is where is our ester bond? And just as before, we're going to break the bond between the C double bond O and the O. So that is this bond over here. Now, because we are in basic conditions, we are going to give the O na back to the C double bond O bit, that's the O8, and then we're going to give the H back to the alcohol bit. And then we just open this up. So what will we get as our final product? Why do, I might need to go backwards or I'll go up. What a ridiculous place to start. Oh well, what are you gonna do? So really the easiest way to get this right, and feel free again to take your time with it. You don't need to get to the final structure and exactly the layout that you want it to um, immediately, okay? If you need to go via um, something else. So we know we're breaking this bond. So it might even, even be worth just redrawing this in the same kind of positioning. So with the O-NAR here, okay? And then one, two, three, four, and then O, H, like that. That's our product. Technically, if we wanted to, we could leave it like that, but that might make you feel a little bit uncomfortable. So it's fine, we can just draw it back out in a straight line. So this is the same as, if we think about how many carbons we've got in our chain, or even just how many members we've got here. Um, so one, two, three, four, five carbons. One, two, three, four, five carbons. Now on one end, we're going to have the OH, and then on the other end, oh, hang on. I need to add another carbon. Okay, one, two, three, four, five carbons. One, two, three, four, five carbons. So on carbon number one, that's going to be attached to our OH. And then carbon number five is going to have our O, O, Na. Ooh, or we could have drawn that upside down or left to right or back to front. The key is look for your ester bond, Okay, so that's your COO bond. Give the OH or the ONAR back to the C double bond O. Give the H back to the O, and then you're done. Okay, hopefully that was nice and straightforward. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. Make sure that you have liked this video, you subscribed to The Joy Does Chemistry, and I will see you in the next one.